the minister has consistently failed to provide any examples of fraud through vouching. So the minister's bill is unraveling before his eyes. Will he now agree to remove this unjustifiable part of the Unfair Elections Act? Our reasoned position is that people should choose from among 39 different forms of identification to prove who they are and where they live. Okay, sparks flew in the House of Commons today over that, the government's controversial changes to Canada's election laws. Removing the vouching process has become a huge flashpoint. Critics claiming the change could prevent tens of thousands, maybe over 100,000 people from voting or casting a ballot. Shortly after the bill was tabled, the former chief electoral officer, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, had pointed out some concerns on this very program. He gave the bill an A- minus on the program. The government widely quoted him. What does he say now after having time to digest the details and listening to some of the other critics? Does it improve or harm the democratic process? Joining me now, the former chief electoral officer, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, who testified in front of committee about this bill today. Good to see you back here. Thank you. Uh, this has become, since we first spoke about it, on the very first day before anyone had really had a chance to go through it line by line, one of the most controversial pieces of legislation, as you know. Uh, the chief electoral officer, Mr. Meron, uh, Mr. Neufeld, who did the Neufeld report, over 100 academics, they've all said this needs to be changed. When you were on the program on day one, I asked you to grade it, and you gave it an A-. minus. Now that you've read it, would you go back on that grade or do you keep it? Well, number one, you shouldn't assume that I did not read it. Obviously, I didn't go go through line by line the first time that I appeared before you. But I certainly had advice from people who were doing just that, and I had an opportunity to read some of the major sections. Uh, I rated it the way I rated it, because you asked me to rate it. And, you know, they've asked me at the committee this morning, well, how do you feel about that? And I said, you know, I'm not going to re-rate this thing. This is a work in progress. We have a democratic process. Let us see what the government does with the testimony that will be brought forth. Mine, that of the other witnesses who are going to be appearing, and see how it is that they decide to amend the statute. But they used your A-minus grade. Mr. Paul Ever has been on this show to say, Mr. Kingsley has given it an A-minus. We think it's a good bill. So does he. What's the problem here? Do you regret asking me the question? Is this what you're saying? No, I'm trying to get it. Well, let's go through it, because I listened to your testimony right. today, and... There is an extensive criticism of this bill uh, put forth by uh, Mr. Meron, the current chief electoral officer. Do you disagree with any of his criticisms? I said that I agreed with his testimony, and I read the document uh, that you have in front of you. I also indicated this morning the four or five major areas where I think improvements can be made and where I think certain changes are essential to, to the bill. And let, that's what I did this morning before committee. So let me just walk through. So I want the audience, who, who everyone's talking about this bill, so let's go through it. Vouching. Yeah. On the vouching issue, the government says it, <clears throat> the, they want to stop vouching to protect against voter fraud. The, Mr. Meron said this is a solution without a problem that instead of protecting against voter fraud, of which there are no documented cases, they are saying you will disenfranchise voters. Your position on vouching? Well, my position was made very clear this morning before committee. Vouching must be retained. It is a strictly controlled process under the Canada Elections Act. Let me explain. In order to be vouched for, you have to go to the same poll where an elector who's already proven his ID and his address to this, with, with documentary proof to the election officials says, I know this person. His name is Evan Solomon, and he lives on this street. And I, I'm ready to swear an oath to that, right. not in writing at this stage. And the person being sworn says, yes, I do reside at that address, and that is who I am. Now, what has been lacking is the documents that are supposed to be filled by electoral officials when this happens. That's all that's lacking. Of course, it's, it's an important lack. But all we need to do is solve that problem. So do you agree with the statement, don't <clears throat> confuse administrative errors with voter fraud? Supreme Court has agreed with that in the Opitz case, so of course I agree with that. Pierre Polyevre, though, when I spoke to him, the minister, I asked him about that, uh, th the fact that Harry Neufeld, the very report that he quotes, who has said to me on CBC Radio's The House that it's a selective reading, he said this, sh there's voter fraud. Uh, Mr. Mayron said there isn't. Here's what Mr. Polyevre said to me. It's his agency 
that is responsible for prosecuting fraud under the Canada Elections Act through the commissioner, which is currently housed in his office. And if anybody was to prosecute it, it would be him. But he can't because in 45,000 cases, he doesn't even have the names of the voucher or the voter. He's essentially arguing that we don't know there's no voter fraud because he alleges Mr. Mehran isn't and can't even investigate. The point is, I've identified without Harry's report the process as I know it, and it is a very good process. You see what we're talking about is the deputy returning officer, the pe person who hands you, who checks your name, your ID. That person has 20 people in line. One, two people show up and say, I want to vouch for this person. Yeah. That's my brother, okay? Or that's my wife, or that's my sister-in-law. And he, th the person looks, yeah, okay, I see you. Please provide me with your ID. They provide them with the ID, the proof of address, and they swear that they know this person. Of course, the, the deputy returning officer sees the people lined up and says, okay, go ahead, please, vote. And they forget to fill out the paper. We, we simply have to get them to fill out the paperwork. Okay, so on vouching, you think the bill's got it wrong. What about on compelling testimony? Uh, Mr. Mehran, the, for, the chief uh, electoral officer, wants the ability to compel testimony in order to expedite investigations into things like, for example, the robocalls slash Pierre uh, Poutine yeah. situation. Do you agree that he or she, the CEO, should have the power to compel testimony? Well, number one, the chief electoral officer, contrary to what I've just heard, does not prosecute, has never prosecuted under the statute. That has been the commissioner until 2006, and that has been the director of public prosecutions since then. Okay? And the, re the chief electoral officer made that recommendation in conjunction with the commissioner. That authority would be vested in the commissioner, not in the chief electoral officer. But should he have the, compel the power to compel of testimony? Course. Of this course. This is what I said this morning. Right. Yes, because we're finding through the robocalls investigation that we're not getting to the bottom of the issue. Okay? We, we've only gotten to one part of it. We simply have to get to there, and people are not telling us what they know, Gee. and we would want to compel them to testify about that. And I will also add, that power is being requested with a court order permitting it to be exercised, which does not exist under the other federal statutes which have, electro uh, which right. have administrative bodies with that authority. Okay, so on vouching, you agree with Mr. Mehran uh, on compelling testimony. What about on the other issue, on fundraising and advertising, or what some are characterizing as the $20 loophole that would allow parties to call people who've donated at least $20 in the last five years for further fundraising purposes? The minister said it's a very small number of people. The act would require scripts to be kept so that they can be examined. Uh, some see this as a loophole for advertising. What's your view? My view is, how can you pick up money without telling people why they should donate to you? And the moment you do that, it's called advertising under the statute. And when you advertise, that's a controlled expenditure. So this is not a scheme that are, it is not justified to do that. And what is small today may not be all that small. We have heard from someone who used to run campaigns that this amounts to a million dollars. This is not small. What about Section 18, the section that the, Mr. Meron told me would limit the chief electoral office uh, ability to communicate uh, to voters? Uh, he wants it repealed, your view. My view is that it has to be repealed, totally. The whole of Section 18 in the proposed legislation. Because, you see, we have a, a system which is envied throughout the world. And I know that because I've traveled that world. And I've had the people come to Elections Canada saying, how do you people do it? How do you wind up with such a good democracy? And the answer is, we have a very good electoral process. We need to continue to have a process where Canadians have confidence, trust the system. And in, Canadians could no longer trust the system if they knew the person running it couldn't tell us what is happening to it at any time that he wishes to do so. Mr. Polyevra has argued that this bill will make elections more fair and the punishment greater. Mr. Meron and Harry Neufeld, who did the report, argues that in trying to solve this problem that they argue doesn't exist, the result will be the disenfranchisement, and I'll use what Harry Neufeld told me, of hundreds of thousands of voters. Do you agree that hundreds of thousands of voters could be disenfranchised from their ability to vote if this bill, as is, is passed. Well, my understanding, based on the statistical extrapolation from Harry's report, 
is that it, it would touch approximately 120,000 people. That is substantial. And, you know, that number may go down somewhat if vouching is, is no longer permitted because people might say, okay, I have to do something, but I don't think it would go down substantially. That's my view, and that's why I favor retention of vouching, and that's what I recommended. Okay, so I, I'm just going to say this one last time because you're always good to come on the show. On the vouching issue, you think the bill's wrong and Mr. Mehran is right. On the compelling testimony, you think the bill's wrong and Mr. Mehran is right. On the um, loophole, on the money, you think the bill's wrong and Mr. Mehran is right. On the number of voters that could be disenfranchised if it's passed, you think the bill's wrong and Mr. Mehran is right. Do you still give this thing an A-, minus, given the fact that... I was asked that same question at committee this morning. And what I told the committee is what I told you a little while back. There's no point in re-rating the bill at this time. This is water under the bridge. Right. I told the committee what I thought was positive, seven or eight items which right. you've not discussed. I talked about certain things that people thought were negatives. I said, no, they're neutral. Yes. Okay. And then I said, here are the things that need to be changed or things that should be considered for change. You look at that total package, consider it now. Let's see what the government does with this. Let's see what it does with the testimony of others. And then I'll come back on your show and evaluate the final version of the bill. Okay, that, that? Uh, that's a promise. But the point is, your last message then, so we'll get away from the grading system, if you had to now send a message, how urgent is it that this bill, the changes that you've just discussed here, how urgent is it that the government makes those changes? How important is it in your view? Well, urgent and important are two different things. I stated that the last two elements, vouching and the role of the chief electoral officer, simply had to go. You cannot eliminate vouching, and you cannot eliminate the role of the chief electoral those officer. Those are essential. Th those you, the bill consider, cannot contain those, in your view. I consider the way that the bill is formulated now, that has to change. That's a red line for you. You could not accept the bill with those in it. I said I will wait until I see the end result of this. I have not lost hope on that front. All right, and, and this will be interesting to find out what happens. Jean-Pierre Kingsley... Uh, You've just invited yourself back, and I am more than delighted to have you back anytime you want to discuss these issues. No one knows them as well as you, and I'm looking forward to seeing your review of if any of these amendments are actually made. Thank you, sir. A pleasure.